Thank you, Jesus, for gracing us with your presence first thing this morning. Thank you, Lord. Worship with us this morning. Let's not waste one second of this day. If you've been as anxious for these times as I've been, there's nothing going to interfere. Oh, hallelujah to the love of God. Oh, hallelujah. There's nothing going to hinder my prayers this morning. Oh, I bless his holy name. I thank you for keeping us and blessing us and bringing us back together again. I bless his holy name. Thank you, Lord. Oh, bless his name. If you need a touch this morning, it's yours.
sing goodbye world goodbye. Cause one of these days, Sister Jackie, we're gonna say goodbye. Hallelujah. Somebody give him a shout of praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo! Man, I feel good in this house this morning. Do y'all feel the Holy Ghost in this place? My word, I feel like running. Woo! Hallelujah. I'm telling you, I feel the Holy Spirit in this house this morning, don't you? Glory, 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 glory. I feel God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Man, I tell you, I feel the Lord. Can we stand one more time to our feet all over this place? Come on and let's lift it up to Him. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Oh. 
Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is too good to just pass up. Mm. If he's been good to you, won't you just tell him, Lord, I love you this morning. I thank you, God, for your goodness. Lord, I thank you for your mercy. God, I thank you for your grace.
lift your hands up to him right now. Let's sing that one more time. I feel Jesus. Yes, I do. I feel Jesus. I feel Jesus in this place. And my soul does burn within me. Oh, it burns within me. Yes, it does. soul does. Let's sing it to him. noise to the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I dare somebody just to shout at the top of your lungs right now as loud as you can. good right there mercy hallelujah aren't y'all glad you didn't stay home today <laughs> you didn't feel that sitting on your couch the last three months I didn't Man, there's something about God's people getting to... Two 
mercy. I'm telling y'all. Do y'all feel what I feel? I like that, brother. Man, I like that move you just did right there. Sister Jackie's done turn around, I tell you. Hallelujah. Woo. Woo. Mm. Mm. Wouldn't take a million dollars for this right here. My Lord, have mercy. Are y'all happy? <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Sister Francis, it's good to be in God's house. Hallelujah. My goodness. Well, y'all can be seated if you want to. Mercy. 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 Mm. This gives us a taste of what heaven is like. Mercy. I don't think I'm going to be able to contain myself when I get over yonder. Great day of life. Good gracious, that's good. Mmm. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. How many, in you, how many in this place, you've tasted the world. You know what the world tastes like. Oh, this, this is nothing like what the world has to offer. I took my first drink when I was a teenager. I don't, probably 19 years of age. Somebody dared me. They went to a little gas station. And they came out with this big jug of, I don't know what it was. And they dared me to drink the whole thing. And I drank the whole thing. Because I was dumb. How many of y'all know teenagers sometimes? <laughs> I started that about 7 or 8 o'clock. 10 o'clock I started feeling a little dizzy. 11 o'clock my curfew was at 12. By, le by, by 11 o'clock I was sitting on the, floor, on the ground. Throwing up all over the place and my buddies were standing all around me in a circle and they had that worried look on their face because they had to take me home and my daddy was the preacher <laughs> and the preacher's son is on the ground oh, I ain't gonna get detailed but boy it was not good and and, and by 12 o'clock they're taking me home and uh, they, one drove my car and the other one drove his truck Y'all know what my friends did, Brother Mark? You think that they walked me inside and helped me inside? No, sir. They pushed me out the door, and the next thing I know, they're driving down the road as fast as they can get. And I'm standing on the back porch with my key, trying to get the key into the lock, and I drop the key, and I'm reaching down, and I, when I finally got inside, there was my daddy standing right there at that door watching me. My friends were halfway home at that point. I can tell you because I know I've tasted of what the world tastes like. This, friend, I would never go back to what this world has to offer. There's nothing to go back to. Somebody shout amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, we love you. Thank you for being here this morning. Good to see each and every one of you. Here in God's house, we're just so excited about what the Lord is doing. Real quick, real quick, I want to thank all of our volunteers who have come out here a little early to make sure that uh, we provide, you know, just a safe atmosphere as much as we possibly can. And uh, we want you to feel safe. We wanted our seniors especially to feel safe. And so we did everything we could, but it is so good to have people who will work, volunteers, we appreciate them. I, I don't know if I should say this or not. I, I've debated about this, but you know, when, when COVID-19 first started, 
all of the churches had to close. That was a hard decision. But one, one thing that I guess rested upon all pastors' hearts and deacons and anyone in leadership and even members, church members, you don't want your church to fall into a financial struggle. And uh, we just worried about our finances here at the church. And I got, I, I remember I talked to Sister Joanne and both, we were, we, she was probably more worried than I was about the finances of the church. She called me and she said, Pastor, you will not believe the tithes that are coming in. And I, I just want to say I thank y'all for that. that. That was showing your faithfulness in the midst of hard times. We want to thank you for that. And I've got a little other bit of news that Sister Joanne shared with me. And again, I've debated telling this because I, I'm, I don't like to talk about money. I do not like to talk about money. But I near about fell out of my seat when she told me the amount of ties that were coming in. And then she told me something else. She said, Preacher, do you know where we are on our church loan? I said, Sister, I don't have any idea. How many of you think, well, maybe it was under 100000 What about if I told you it was under 80000 What if I told you that it's under 60000 Sister, I can't remember the exact number. What was it? Say it one more time. $56,000. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo. <laughs> that was God, ladies and gentlemen. That was God doing that. Hallelujah. I give God the honor and the praise. She told me last Sunday, she, said, she told me the tithes again that came in last Sunday. She said, preach, our pure fuel chills. <laughs> Thank you for that. We sure do appreciate that. Again, at the conclusion of the service, we'll be receiving our tithes and our offerings. Our uh, ushers will be standing at either of these back doors. And uh, you can just leave your tithes with them. We're going to continue worshiping the Lord. Amen? Amen. Who's up to sing? All right. Sister Debbie's going to sing. Has our band been doing a fantastic job? Woo! Good gracious, they've been jamming. And our praise team singers. Wonderful, wonderful. Worship the Lord with them. I really hate to bother you, but Lord, I got a whole lot on my mind. You're real busy, but I promise I won't take much of your time. But Lord, I need a little grace to help me make it through. I need to feel that kind.
As a child, I heard a preacher say that you were a sinner's friend. I remember when I came to you with a heart, a heart so black with sin. the night you turned my life around seems you made me over new all oh, the mercy that you showed me Lord kept me coming back to you You'll just squeeze my hand Let me feel you by my side You said you'd never leave me You'd always be my guide If you will stand with us for the reading of God's word this morning again, thank you so much for being here. As you can see, our, our screen is not up. Uh, that's not the screen's fault. It is our computer's fault. In the midst of all that's been going on, there's been so many, so much talk about a virus. Guess what happened to our computer? We got a virus. So I reckon our computer thought it had COVID, so it wanted to take a break. But um, it is being worked on, and hopefully, Lord willing. Our computer will be back in action next Sunday. So if you have your Bibles, I'd love to ask you to turn with us to the book of Psalm chapter 42. This is the, um, the verse that we preached from last Sunday. And uh, there was just so much in this that I wanted to preach and just didn't get to it all last Sunday. Psalm 42 and verse 5. The writer says, Why art thou cast down? O oh, my soul, and why art thou disquieted in me? Why art thou cast down, O oh, my soul, and why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God, for I, yet, I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. Let's pray. Father, we love you this morning. God, we thank you, Master, for all that you have done for us. Lord, we thank you for raining down in this place today. We thank you for your mighty presence Lord, we thank you for what we have felt and sensed in this place. We thank you, Lord, for the anointing that we feel in this place. God, I pray that you will speak through your servant this morning. God, use me as a mouthpiece, Lord. God, I pray that you'll touch my mind, direct my thoughts. I pray for our congregation this morning. 
God, that we would be anointed hearers of the word and not only doers. Help us, Father, to, to hear your word and to apply it to our lives. And God, we pray, Lord, that when it's all said and done, that we can walk away from this place knowing that we have been in the presence of Almighty God. We thank you for that. We ask it. Count it done by faith in Jesus' holy and precious name we pray. Let all of God's people say amen. amen. And amen. Will you turn to your neighbor and wave at them. Tell them it's good to see them here in the house of the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. We are living, and, and we spoke about this last Sunday. We are living in a time of unrest. And I use that word because it's one that I've heard many times as I watch the news. You know, you hear that word, unrest. Our nation is at a time of unrest. I don't know about you, but, but I believe even before we ever heard about COVID-19, I believe that our nation was at a time of unrest then. I believe that before we celebrated the year 2020 coming into our nation, our time, I believe we were even at that time at a stage of unrest. They tell us that, that people are under an incredible amount of stress in this age that we're in. People are troubled on every side. Stress is weighing down on us every day, day in and day out, whether it be your job, whether it be your finances, whether it be your children. M maybe it's a, a relational problem with you and your spouse. It seems that we're all, all the time being faced with trouble. And we're living in an age, they say that we, that we have more access to knowledge in this time than ever before in history. We can find out something that's happened on the other side of the planet within moments of it actually happening. And you know, that's a good thing in a sense, but I guess it's also something that we need to realize that the more bad news you hear, the more troubled you become. And so we are hearing bad news all the time. In 2019, bad news. We were hearing about church shootings all the time. That troubled us. So much so that our county, we, we all met at, at the college. And our sheriff had different speakers to come out to address the church on what we should do to, pre to prevent a shooting and to protect our congregations. Why did we do all of that? Because of a state of unrest. Unrest. School shootings. Happening all the time. It got so prevalent in this country that you would hear of a, of a school shooting that we almost get hardened to it. When we hear about it, we, it, it doesn't... It doesn't impact us like it used to. Columbine, when that happened, that was a shock to this nation. But now it's become so prevalent and it happens so frequently. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we really don't think that much about it anymore. But it is a troubling thing to see young boys and girls running away with their hands lifted in the air because of a shooting in their school. That's a sad day in which we live. We are living in a state of unrest. This psalm that I read to you, and I suppose it has stuck out to me, I mean, just that question. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted in me? I, I guess that, that those two questions seem so adequate today. You know, I, I think even I perhaps have asked myself those questions in the recent years. Why am I troubled? Why am I cast down? Why am I disquieted? And I believe that those questions, we can relate to those questions because it is believed that David wrote that psalm when his son Absalom betrayed him. You remember the story how Absalom betrayed 
King David and, and, and he persuaded all of Israel and Judah to follow after him as opposed to his father who was the rightful king. David was the king at that time. Well, Absalom took his kingdom away from him. Can you imagine the, the betrayal? His own son betraying him in such a way. Some two years it is believed that Absalom went around Israel politicking for himself. Asking people, wouldn't you rather have me as your king instead of David? Can you imagine how that must have felt for David, for his own son, for Caleb? Doing that behind your back, Brother Roger? Can you imagine uh, you know, your own flesh and blood turning against you that way? Well, I can just imagine how David felt. It was a troubling time for King David. And he wrote this psalm. Verse 5, why art thou disquieted? Why art thou cast down? He asked himself these questions because he was in a state of unrest. In this state of unrest, David asked two questions. Number one, he said, why art thou cast down? In other words, he's asking, why are you in despair? How many of you ever talk to yourself? Do you ever talk to yourself? Um, I, sometimes I talk to the devil out loud, an aggravating devil. But you really, we're talking to ourselves. I, I, I had just gotten a job at, at, in the produce department at the grocery store that I used to work at, Harris Teeter. I remember my, my produce manager, he, I was in training, and, and he told me, he said, now this is a good job. He said, a lot of times you're just playing with fruits, and you're just putting fruit up and vegetables. And he said, uh, he said don't be surprised, he said, if, if you get kind of lonely at times and you start talking to yourself. He said, don't you worry about that. He said, it's when the fruit starts talking back to you that you might have a problem. <laughs> we, 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 we talk to ourselves. Well, David here is talking to himself. And the first question he asked was, why? Talking to himself. Why art thou cast down? Why are you in despair, O oh my soul? Why have you given up? Why are you so discouraged? Why are you so desolate? And miserable. Have y'all ever been miserable before? <laughs> Just plain miserable. Don't even know why. My wife gets that way. Well, I won't go there, but... Uh... <laughs> You just get aggravated. And David is asking himself this question. Why art thou cast down? That's the first question. Why are you in such a bad mood? Why have you given up? Why are you despairing? Second question he asked. Why art thou disquieted in me? That word disquieted literally means to groan. To roar. To murmur. Sometimes we get to a place... Where we murmur and we complain because of the circumstances in which we find ourselves. He says, why aren't you complaining? Why are you shouting from within? Why are you disquieted? He asked those two questions. Why are you cast down and why are you disquieted? Those were the two questions that a troubled David asked himself. I want you to notice something in that verse. He asked those two questions. If you look in your Bible, you'll see a question mark at the end. It was a question. He's asking himself, why are you cast down? Why are you disquieted? I want you to notice something. After that question mark, there's no answer. He doesn't answer himself. He asks these two questions, and then he moves on. He just simply... Uh, looks at his soul, looks at his reflection and says, why are you cast down? Why are you disquieted? But he doesn't answer himself. His soul could have responded, well, David, I I'm cast down. I'm disquieted because Absalom has turned against us. Not only has he turned against us, but he's turned the whole kingdom against us. Surely his soul had a reason to be disquieted, to be troubled. Surely, if David really wanted an answer, an answer could have been given. There was a reason for him to be disquieted. There was a reason for him to be troubled. But no answer is given. That's significant, ladies and gentlemen, because I believe it means this one thing. It didn't matter. I'm going somewhere. Hold on. 
It didn't matter. Why did his soul not give an answer? Tell me. It didn't matter. Why did his soul not answer? Oh, y- y'all still ain't heard me. A few of you have, but I want to hear this side. Why did his soul not answer? Y'all are pretty good, but one more time. Why did his soul not answer? It didn't matter. That preacher's lost his mind. It doesn't matter. Whatever you're going through, at times it can get you down. But I want you to realize something this morning. It doesn't matter how bad it gets. It doesn't matter the amount of trouble that you're under. It doesn't matter what you're facing. It does not matter. Because greater is He that is in you. It doesn't matter. I wish y'all would shout it back to me real loud. It doesn't matter. Why? Because greater is He that is in us than He that is in this world. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. It does not matter. Somebody need to shout in this house. It doesn't. Come on and say it one more time. It doesn't matter. Say it one, loud. It. it say it one more time. It doesn't matter. God is going to take care of me. I said God knows my sister my, 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 my name he knows my situation and he knows how to take good care of me how many children of God do we have here in this place who wants to give God a praise it doesn't matter what I'm going through God is able to take good care of me hallelujah It doesn't matter, Brother Daryl Fowler. It doesn't matter. Sister Joanne, it doesn't matter. Hallelujah. Brother Jimmy Pope, I want you to turn to Sister Barbara right now and tell her it doesn't matter. My hope and my trust is in the Lord. I said my hope and my trust is in the Lord. I'm in the center of His hand and He is going. Brother Andy, He's going to take care of you and me both, brother. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, I feel that. It doesn't matter. And then he shouts. He says, Hope! Why art thou cast down on my soul? Why art thou disquieted in me? He doesn't give himself, an, uh, 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 he doesn't give himself a window to answer. He doesn't give himself time to answer. He doesn't give himself an opportunity to answer. He asks those two questions. And then he interrupts himself and says, Hope! You know, Craig, if I think about my problems and sit down and just think about them, it'll get me down after a while. Won't it you, brother? It sure will. And I can tell. I'll call some people who I know really good. You can tell where they're in a bad mood. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Sharon Henson, I love her to death, but I can tell when she's ill about something. Come on. And say, amen. We do, sister. We can tell. What's wrong with you, brother? That's what we... What's wrong with you? When Annette Meshaw... I called her a different last name one time. Sister Meshaw's in a bad mood. John can tell. And so we look for a reason. Why? 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 Why am I? Why am I this way? My wife is six months pregnant. We should have special prayer right now for me. <laughs> Who says the husband is not affected by her pregnancy? She's walloped my head a few times since she's 
found out this wonderful news. I'm glad we didn't go to church. Y'all would have seen my black eye. <laughs> Do I need to remind y'all what happened in our closet in our bedroom that one time? She walloped me, fried my jaws. I wanted to hit her back so bad, but I grabbed my coat instead and just shook my clothes and I looked back at her. Take that woman. She started laughing at me because the clothes were swaying back and forth. I get abused, y'all. <laughs> Craig, do you get abused, brother? Let's share. You don't? Okay. I know Brother Thomas does. I don't even have to ask. <laughs> he shook his head, then when Deborah turned around, he, he, he froze. <laughs> You get down and out. Don't we? We get down and out. We struggle. We, we get in bad moods. And at times we want to ask ourselves exactly what David asked. Why? Why am I cast down? Why am I disquieted in me? But I want us to do the same thing that David said. Don't give yourself, don't give yourself room to complain. Because if you do, the devil's going to slip in and he's going to give you more reasons than what you've got. Amen. Mm. He'll, give, he'll add to the list, won't he? And he'll keep adding. And, and you think, well, when you, when you start complaining, you'll think you got two or three things to be mad about. By the time the devil gets in, he'll have 20 things going through your head. And by the time he's finished with you, he, you're as good as dead. Amen. Amen. So don't give yourself an opportunity to answer the question. Oh, we can ask all day long. But do as David did. Why am I cast down? Why am I disquieted? We need to remember one thing. It doesn't matter what we're going through. Does not, does not matter. We have a hope that is greater than any trial. We have a hope that is greater than any valley. We have a hope that is greater than any mountain. We have a hope that is greater than any giant. We have a hope that is greater than any virus. We have a hope that is greater than racism. We have a hope that is greater than hatred. We have a hope that is greater than the devil that is in this world. Come on, saints. If you are more than victors this morning, you should lift up a great big victorious praise in this house right now. And thank God we're not defeated. We're on the winning side. Side, that trumpet is getting ready to sound and we're going to leave this world. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We're getting ready to leave this world. Whew. Hope, hope thou in God. Romans says that hope maketh not ashamed. What does that mean, Sister Thelma? That means my hope will never disappoint me. <laughs> that hope that I have will never let me down. That hope that I have will never, never leave me wanting. He said, we have a hope makes not a shame. Jeremiah 17, blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord. Whose hope, whose hope is the Lord for he shall be a tree planted by the waters and that spreadeth out her roots by the river how many of you know that the river is still flowing throughout COVID-19 the river was still flowing throughout the riots the river was still flowing they've tried to dam up that river for some 2,000 years but there is a river that is still flowing and I'm a tree planted by the rivers of water 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that hope, that hope leads me to this conclusion. For the which calls I suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed. In other words, he's saying it doesn't matter. I am not ashamed. For I know. He said, for I know whom I have believed. And he said, I am. I wish I had somebody to preach to. He said, I am persuaded. Somebody shout, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed to him against that day. Hallelujah. I know it. I know whom I have believed. I know that my Redeemer lives. I know that He still sits on the throne. I know that I'm the called. I'm the chosen. I'm the anointed of God. Hallelujah. That's enough to make a 90 year Methodist raise his hand and praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. I am persuaded. One last scripture Hebrews chapter 6. About two immutable things in which it was impossible for God. To lie. You know, throughout the years, Brother Bobby, I heard preachers say it all the time. They said, God can do anything but lie. That's based on that scripture. It is impossible. Somebody shout impossible. Impossible. It is impossible for God to lie. So that we might have a strong consolation. I guess another word for consolation is hope. <laughs> we have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us, which hope we have as an anchor. Both sure and steadfast. We have an anchor. Do y'all remember that song? The anchor holds. I was a child when that song became popular. And I had a school project. Our teacher, she gave us an assignment. She wanted us to pick our favorite song. She wanted us to analyze every word of it. To explain what it meant. And then we were to bring it to school. And she was going to play that song in front of the whole classroom. I decided that I was going to play the anchor holds. So I'm writing out my paper and I'm trying to make sense of that song. And I get to the chorus, the anchor holds. Though the ship is battered, the anchor holds. Though the sails are torn. I got to that. And I wrote what I thought it meant. What I thought it meant. Well, I finished out everything. And I showed it to my mom. I said, Mom, take a look at this and see what you think. And she looked at my explanation of that line. The anchor holds. The ship is battered. She looked at my explanation. I was describing 
the anchor as God. She looked at that and she said, that's not right, son. And I said, well, what do you mean? I said, the anchor, that's God. She said, no. She said, the Bible says that our hope is the anchor. And I said, well, oh, mom, I said, well, where does God come in in all of this? I'll never forget what mom said. She said, you think about how an anchor works. They let it down. That anchor goes down to the bottom. And then it drags the bottom. And it searches for something to latch on to. She said, Tim, God is not the anchor. Our hope is that anchor. God is the rock upon which my anchor. (laughs) My hope is anchored in the rock Christ Jesus. The stone that the builders rejected has become the head of the corner. And that's the very stone, ladies and gentlemen, that my hope has been attached to. Let me tell you about that stone. Jesus looked at Peter and said, Upon this rock, upon this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. My hope is anchored in a rock, in a rock, in a rock, in a rock. In a rock, Christ Jesus. Give him a shout of praise. Lift it up to him, church. Stand to your feet all over this congregation. I've gone over 10 minutes. Sister Wanda Faircloth is going to get me. But once you get started and feel the presence of the Lord, it's hard to quit. And to know that i got to wait a whole other week to see y'all again. Hadn't it been good to be in God's presence again, church? Hadn't it been good to be in God's presence again with His people? Sister Helen Hendren, I'll look at you sitting on the front row of this church and that makes it worth all the while to see my sister one more time, to see all of you one more time. Can we lift up our hands and give Him one more praise? Woo, glory, glory, glory. Tempest. Sing it, sister, sing it. All the wild, stormy, in Jesus, I'm safe. Evermore. Well, sing it now. Well, I've anchored. I've anchored my soul in a heaven of rest. Well, I will say. Yeah.